<laughs> right here, Staten Island, New York. Side block where your boy was raised at McCormick and Arlington, Staten Island, New York, 10303. This was the birthplace right here. My mother's house was on McCormick Place. This is where, in her basement, is where I was, where, where the music, my love for the music, the love for this game was born at. It was in between the time, like it was in between the um, two of the two of the wildest projects on Staten Island. You got Arlington projects, which is two, three blocks away from my mother house that I grew up on, and then you got um, Manus Harbor projects, which was across the tracks from Arlington. And, and, and in between that, you know, it was a lot of turmoil between the A and the Harbor. Growing up, you know, niggas was chasing niggas. From the harbor coming over here, all the niggas chasing harbor niggas out. All the niggas get caught in the harbor, it was the shit. And I'm right in the middle, you know what I mean? With my little team, the little homies that I grew up with on, on, on the block and shit. But right here is where it all started at, in my mother's basement. Me and my homies going over records and listening to the who was hot and me taping over my mom's motherfucking tapes and shit. From when the shit, you know, when hip hop was hip hop back back then in the early days, taping over mom's tapes, listening to my father's records with the samples and all that. Like this is this shit right here in the streets, this was the birth of Cheddar Bang, the birth of the artist, the birth of the hustler, timeless music making nigga, CEO. You know what I'm saying? This is the birthplace. Coming up, like all the OGs I just looked up to without saying no names, you know, all the OGs that was getting money, I was looking up to them, they had the cars, they had the girls, they had the jewels. I was always in school, doing good, stayed out of a lot of trouble, but still was had a love and a passion for hip hop and hip hop music. And I think being so deep and in love with hip hop kept a nigga really focused on staying out of a lot of bullshit. As I got older, I started getting into a lot of dumb shit, getting locked up and all that, learning the game and learning the streets. But the music and, and everything that was going on in this community was, a, was all a part of me. That's everything that you hear in the rhymes. There's no facade, there's no fraud. Everything is real, every scar, every story. It either happened or a nigga seen it or heard about it. All right, so now we're gonna take a trip to one of the projects where I came up at, where I had my first fights at. It's called Arlington, it's in Staten Island. Had my first fights, made my first dollars, sold my first weeds and jonesies. We're gonna take a trip over there. Timeless, you heard? <laughs> Time and time again, time, and time and time again, time again. I try to tell him I'ma to do it till I win, till I win, till I win. Uh huh. Till my enemies my wanna enemies be my friends, be my friends. It's you for me. These niggas ain't for you, they ain't for you. These niggas ain't for you, they ain't for you. These niggas ain't for you, they ain't for you. New faces need blue faces, more cash, more bags. Yeah, what up, motherfucker? This mm -hmm. your boy, Uncle Murder. You already know I'm fucking with my nigga. Don't panic, TV. My nigga, Cheddar Bang, Staten Island. What the fuck is up, Brooklyn? Fuck the police for huh? life. We headed to the A now. As a nigga got older, though, a nigga started getting more and more into the streets and shit. And, um,. Nigga made a decision at one point where it was either, you know, follow follow mama rules, can't sell drugs and live under mama house. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. So, you know, I started really, I left my mom's crib at an early age, man, and really just started the streets embraced the nigga. And I was always a good dude as far as making music, as far as hustling, stand up, you know what I mean? Always about business, so, you know, a couple good brothers took me under the wing, and I was always valid, man, always safe, never had no real 
issues and problems they always got fixed. You know what I'm saying? But now we're gonna take y'all through the A so y'all can see some more of the stomping grounds and the hoods and shit. Five Highland and Arlington on Staten Island. Grandmother lived here, so my family lived on McCormick, and my grandmother lived here. So, you know, I used to spend a lot of nights out here and made a lot of friends growing up who are still, who I'm still friends with today. One friend in particular, Mr. Chernak, Jack Chernak, his brother, Chris Chernak. We still to this, you know, recently my career, he's, you know, us coming up as kids, and, you know, he was always a little bit older, but us coming up as kids, years later, me coming home from jail, he one of the people who helped me with my career. I came home, he had the studio, and I met him right here, him and his big, him and his brother, Christian Jack. So, you know, it's funny how life always comes around full circle. Say a prayer to the Lord when I wake up. Lord, Wonder Lord. will I go to hell for trying to cake up? Huh? Wonder will I see my homie if I go to heaven? Please. I ain't taking laws yet. Please. I'm just learning lessons. Lord. Never Lord. hate Lord. it because that's how you block your own blessings. Never waited, Lord. hesitated Lord. on a Lord. different Lord. time. Lord. Learned Lord. a different Lord. type Lord. of patience on that that's mess all up. Now you wouldn't understand it. All them nights we was down made the wind more dramatic. Novels playing HD, never no static. No, Sad no, car no, actors, many dying for a check. She said she wouldn't f with me. Now I know her neck. They was passing through, we was really in jacks. If you never did a day, don't tell me about no stress. Now we blessed up. Blessed Ain't up, talking about up. no doctor, but them checks up. And they trying to tell my story how they messed up. Like, Look. It's the buildings, all the lobbies, a lot went down. Not so much in the in the lobby itself, but they used to be in here smoking and shit. But the staircases, Lord, there was a lot going on in them staircases. A lot of niggas lost their motherfucking virginity in them staircases. A lot of people, unfortunately, lost a couple dollars. Dice games. Oh man, there's so many stories, man. Shout out to all the OGs from the from the old A. We used to call it 80 pound back in the days, 85. Holland Nav. This shit is a part of it's a part of my story. That's why I'm giving it to y'all. Nobody else don't let nobody else tell you nothing different. This is a part of my story right here. These hallways, these these streets. All of it, every bar you hear, you heard? I was right here in the trenches. Nobody can tell you nothing different. You gonna hear me say that 80 million times, because it's real. Everything is timeless. That was one thing with me, was like, finding out not to be put in a box musically. I always wanted to be forever. I always wanted to make music that was forever. Like you can't say, you hear certain rappers and they sound dated, they sound like they come from a certain time. I never wanted to be that. And right now, so far in my career, I think I, I accomplished that, you know what I'm saying? Make some motherfucking noise, then. This is some loud shit. My name is Cheddar Bang. I'm from Staten Island, and all my Staten Island niggas is in here right now. We gonna do a pillow shit. So right now I'm gonna take you to one of the blocks where it was one of the most hottest blocks south in Arlington, which is in between Arlington Projects and Manus Harbor Projects. That's where a nigga was getting all his money at. South in Arlington and on Grandview, on the Arlington side of the tracks, we gonna shoot over there. Nigga was cleaning up. You heard? I don't, you know, I don't know what you know say what the story is, but. Nigga was over there cleaning up. Really, really getting to it when that era, and when that era was really popping. Really getting to it, you heard? <laughs> That's all part of the story. That's why we here telling it, man. Staten Island got a story too, you know what I mean? And I'm one of the few people who gonna bring it to you. So right now we about to pull up on South and Arlington and shit. My old stomping ground. South in Arlington, in Staten Island. Look 
again. Let me say that again. Right now we on South of Arlington. Back, back then when the nigga was coming up, man, this corner right here and across the street was one of the most busiest money getting this corners on Staten Island. South Ave and Arlington make no mistake about it. As busy as any Harlem block, any Brooklyn block, niggas was getting money right here. It's crack houses, about 10 crack houses, all old crack houses all around this whole shit, man. And your boy was right there in the middle of it, cleaning up, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my nigga Goosh. He know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? He was cleaning up too back in that era. So you know, I'm just giving y'all the real. I'm not add nothing on it, I'm telling y'all exactly what it is, cause what it is. I can't never let nobody else tell my story. You wanna know about me, you could go in these stores and ask about the, ask the business owners. Chicken spot behind me, you know what I'm saying? Liquor store, two fours, you ask the two four guys who cheddar bangers, they know who I am, man. I'm a staple in the community. I know the business owners, you know what I'm saying? They know me very well, cause I spend money, I donate to the community. I'm out here throwing food drives and all that. Anti-violence movements, trying to give back to the people, man. But everybody else chatting. You know what I'm saying? This is what I do in the city, man. What I have done and what I will continue to do, representing this brand, Don't Panic Entertainment. That's what it's all about. But this is it. This is the core. This is where it started at. Then I'm about to take y'all around a corner. That's where I had the spot at. Doing at least a... At least a band a day, but this this block right here is like you could go to the store, walk out your crib, walk out the store. By the time you come home, you made fifteen hundred. So you know, twenty five hundred bands a day just chilling. That's when we was cleaning up every day for years. You know what I'm saying? And they can start slipping up, catching cases, man. The story's a real one. Ride with me though, Tommy. Today, big Al. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up, man? Everything's good, man. Big Al's kitchen, a staple in the community. You know what I'm saying? I'm always in here showing that love. Good, some of the best chicken in the city. You heard? I put my stamp on that. Y'all gotta come check out Al's Kitchen in South Arlington, but I've been here, you know. This is all part of the community, part of the people, man. You know, gotta get out here and touch the people and spread that love, you heard? Up. My nigga, fuck all the small talk. Monopolize my empires on boardwalk. And if you land on it, how many the big portion? Caution, yellow tape it if they did cross them. Uh. Lambos and ammo, brown skin nigga with a fetish for them red bones. And I still push crack through your headphones. Still got lines to the streets, they ain't yellowed up. So watch what you saying on that telephone. One conversation, my nigga ain't never coming home. Police right here, ooh. Yeah, jeez. See this shit right here? Nigga was living upstairs, right? Niggas living upstairs, selling crack. Foolish at that time. We was foolish. I'm not glorifying. I'm just telling y'all the story. But niggas was living upstairs, selling crack out the front door like it was legal. Like the Carter, nigga. Like it was legal. Then come to find out. Down the line, niggas going uptown, you know what I'm saying? Getting to work uptown like everybody else. The nigga who lived downstairs, he's the plug. So once we found out he was the plug, nigga, we was lit. My man Shitty lived across the street. He was doing his one too, but we was just out the door with it. And that was unfortunately somebody told on us. I know to this day who told the nigga who was down the block getting money told on us. But um I caught my first case. The crib got raided. They found a whole bunch of drugs. And I caught my first case and wound up having to do eight months on Rikers Island behind that shit. Word up. 
And while a nigga was on Rikers Island, that was the first time I heard my music being played on Hot 97. And see, in the midst of all the bullshit and the getting the money and doing all that shit, a nigga was still finding time to go to the studio and get work done and, 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 and watch the OGs and, you know, Jungle Nils and, and all of those guys was out at that time. And I even running around doing what I was doing, niggas still finding time to get work done. I catch a bid from getting raided over here. And inside that bid, I find out my shit is on the air. Funkmaster Flex played a record that I produced for Crunch Low of Authorized Fam from Staten Island, who was hot at that time. And I'm laying on my bunk with my headphones, and I hear the beat drop. And Flex just going crazy, like, yo, you, you, we hear this beat, boom, boom, boom. And, like, this is all history and facts and shit that happened. How I know that the music shit was always meant for me. But I never really took it serious until I came home in 2000. That last bid, that that shit, you know what I mean? 2009, I came home. Excuse me, 2009, I came home. That 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 was it. That stretch from 2000 to 2009, that nine year bid woke me the fuck up. You know what I mean? It was like you have so much going on. It was a wake up. Everybody has their wake up call, and that bid that I did, my last bid. Thank God that was a wake up call and, and I used it as a gem instead of it could have been a crutch. It could have been something that it fucked me up, but I used it and, and gained so much from it. Where from the people I met to the connects I made musically, a lot of that shit came from being in jail and being a stand up nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's for real. But right here though, you know what I'm saying? Right here though, it was a lot of money being made. It was a lot of shit going on, and Manus Harbor Projects was right across the tracks. So it was from here to the Jacks to over there. Nigga was just getting money and fucking with music niggas, you heard? Everything stand up. Nobody ain't never chase nobody nowhere. Nobody ain't never take nothing. None of that. It was just a, a good nigga getting money, hustling, learning the game, learning the streets, and learning the culture, the music, and making good music. And not really taking the music seriously as I should. But today we hear that a lot of. Don't panic. Cousin show here a lot of love too. It's love. Boss for Jump to he got beats. Yeah. We so, out. Yeah. Yeah. I think the boss was up. We're going to do the rehearsal. I was like, who that? Yeah. 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 Yeah
you know, I used to just hold it down. You know what I mean? Niggas, they was just getting money and doing all types of other shit. Running the different parties with Diddy back then when Diddy was on the come up. Hyping them was really there with all these niggas who's billionaires. Chilling with Mob Deep. Mob Deep used to come out here, rest in peace to Prodigy. Mob Deep used to come out here because Scott Free was there A&R. They used to come out, they used to come out here and just drink with niggas, drink Henny. It wasn't even about no music. It was about hustling, getting money, talking shit. They used to come from the bridge and chill out here with Staten Island niggas. Word. Follow Ooh, we lit, it's open. So, you know, hustling in front of the building, you know, it's always a million stories. I remember one time, I used to be always outside. I, was in, I used to hold a building down, boom. Nigga, Lover Horse came home. That's my guy. He was like a, one of the big homies, but he a hothead. He a wild dude. Shout out to Lover Horse. He a OG. Um, remember Horse came home, and I was in front of the building hustling. He was like, "Yo, bang, you know I just came home, man. You you not even from out here, and you, you know you blocking all the sales. I ain't gonna get no money. I'm like, yo, my niggas, and you know I, I'm not going nowhere. Like I've been holding down. You just came home, but." You know, the fiends that's gonna come see you is gonna come see you. The ones that's gonna come see me gonna come see me. And now in my mind, I'm like, oh, this could go ugly because Horse, you know, he was one of them niggas. You know what I'm saying? He was one of them niggas where, you know, if he said something or he felt some type of way, he might, you know, go get that thing. So he's like, all right, my nigga, when I, when I come back outside, I'm gonna get some money, you know what I mean? It, it, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be over here blocking the sales and shit. So I, I got my grip. I'm, he went upstairs, he came back there. I'm sure he pretty sure he had his. He was like, yo, my nigga. I said, yo, son, let me talk to you, geez, you heard? So we went in the building. It could have went crazy in my mind. I'm like, damn, is this nigga gonna back out on me? Am I have to, you know what I mean? Am I gonna get to it quick enough? But we spoke. As men, I told the nigga, yo, my nigga, it's enough money for both of us, son. You heard? It, it don't gotta, we don't gotta go all the way there. We both know each other. We we came up. So we don't, and, and he saw where I was coming with it. I wasn't on no bullshit. And it was, it was hard but love. Like, we know each other. But at the same time, I let him know I respect what you saying, my nigga, because this is where you live at. You know what I mean? It wasn't. You trying to be super tough, super gangster, now I understand, but at the same time, I've been here, and I'm, I got to eat too, but this is what we going to do, pop for pop, you know what I mean, yeah, I said, go upstairs, go see yours, boom, I'm, I have no problem with doing that, Jesus, but I'm not trying to stop you from eating, and that's one of the craziest stories, I got nothing but love for horse to this day, he probably don't even know that, but to this day, like, I'm pretty sure, because he's that type of nigga back then, he a different dude at this time, but I'm pretty sure that he was like, man, I'm going to burn this nigga, you know what I mean? And I'm like, damn, I can't let this nigga burn me. And, and, and those are stories that people don't know that happened out here while a nigga in the streets grinding. That, that could have went all the way left. I couldn't have been here telling this story, but I still got love for that man to this day. And those are just real things. It's a story I'm sharing with y'all that happened, man. And coming up in the hood, these things happen. That could have been bad. Thank God it didn't. I would, I couldn't have been here. You know what I mean? So, word, crazy shit. Yeah, like I was saying, you know, when, when I came out here, like I left my mom's crib and I started staying 361 with my nigga Pop because I chose one way instead of another way. I wanted to do my own thing. I didn't want to follow no rules back then. So I used to come out here. This is my man Wu Cat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I used to come out here with him, Hype, Shaq, Thud, and they had their own movements going on and they brought them. Let them know about Dark Dark Mind Inc. and Scott Free and all of that, what y'all yeah. was doing. About like the early, not late 90s. No, early 90s, matter of fact. Right. 25 years ago. Uh I was always cool with Scott Free, and the hype was always wrong. I never seen him not on. I was just, you know, in the house. I was running with a couple of other crews back in the day. 
I was really trying to dance and do that old hip hop shit back in the day. Right. Ooh, man, had bars though. Don't let him. He oh, had yeah, bars. Yeah, I told my little thing back then. Right. You know what it was. Right. And we was with Scott Free, and Scott Free was like, "Yo, y'all dudes should get together. But we needed like another element, so we got June Jack. So us three made the Red Eye Crew. We did a few things. We don't stress about Beethoven. We did the Tunnel, CBGBs. Right. That's what yeah. It was you. All that. Height. June Jack. June Jack. Red Eye Crew. Red Eye Crew. Now, did this free ever sign y'all, or did he ever sign any artists from, I'm from Staten Island? Uh, Dark Mind Inc., right? He, 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 he had that Dark Mind Inc. I was with Jules and uh, the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the uh, they, they crew, right. Kev Rock, and, and, and uh, what's my man's name? And they was on loud, right? Yeah, they was on loud. Right. And, and then Scott became a and loud after that. Right. And we was, uh, we was on uh, Unsigned Hype in the Source magazine, then Maddie C, they was rocking that movement. Then they, they did Loud, and that was the start of that. So, so right now, like, the nigga who, the nigga who, yeah, I got you, the nigga who signed Mark D, Scott Free, that he signed, um, who else did he sign? Oh, Ray and them, yeah, for the uh, purple Rainbow, tape, yeah. Rainbow's, he signed them, like, he was with these niggas, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I used to come, from across the tracks and then eventually living with Pop to come over here fucking with these niggas. So, and then the mob, Mob Deep used to come out here fucking yeah, with these niggas. Yeah, I remember that. So, Good time. we was always in the loops of, and really outside in the streets. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Scott Free knew a lot of cats, man. He knew uh, LP. Well, I met a lot of cats through that dude, man. A lot we, of cats. We was really out here. And not only was I was learning a lot from these brothers, but it was a family. Like, we came from an era where it was a family. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I had an issue. I remember one time I came on the block. This is the funniest story ever. Yeah. He's involved in it. <laughs> I came out here. A nigga had gave me a car and then told on me and reported the car stolen and got me jammed. So I seen the nigga one day. He was a fiend. I said, I pull up right here. All the niggas outside. I said, yo, this the nigga right here. I seen him talking to the fiend. I'm like, yo, this is the nigga who got me jammed. My nigga, these niggas just start chasing this nigga. Yo, by the time I get, I'm slow as fuck. I'm the last nigga to get there. These niggas got the nigga by the storm. Stop it. So I'm on the side like this, trying to catch my breath from running. Niggas like, yo, nigga, get in there and fuck this nigga up. <laughs> I'm out of prep, so I confess the fuck this nigga up, yo. It was a family. I say all that to say, it was more morals and stand up niggas and family shit going on. And I came up under some real niggas, and I think that's what's missing in the game today. Like a lot of these niggas is just it's like an okay corral. Everybody just running around wild with no real goddess. Like I came up under some niggas who was telling me outside, yo, my nigga, yo, wildin'. Doing it like that, making a bust, busting a move like this, bust a move like this, and then also helping me with the music. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I learned from these niggas who was next to the niggas who was signing everybody that was hot, the niggas got free. So you know, this is where it started at. This is why I'm telling the story yeah. like this. I appreciate the, my big bro who cat being a part of the documentary, no. talking to the people and letting people know. The history of Staten Island, we have a history, we have our own music culture, and there's a lot of tax to the game and we don't get the credit for it. So that's also what this is about. You know what I'm saying? So we the real.